Hello and welcome back to the Tower of London. It's really good to be back with you and I hope that your August was as good as ours was. Now as you can see I'm recording this in the kitchen of One Tower Green and not in the chapel and that's because I'm in quarantine. I've been in quarantine now for about 10 days and um, I had to time this carefully so that I'm ready to take a wedding at the end of this week and the service is next Sunday and I'm grateful for Cortland who took the first Sunday. Being in quarantine or being in isolation as I am thinking about and this is an enforced isolation has got me thinking and I want to talk about that with you um, in this thought for the day. I've listened to a lot more radio while well, I've been by myself than I would normally do and I was taken by the advertisement for a programme by Thomas Dixon called A Short History of Solitude. This is part of a series of programmes. In this first programme, he was exploring various women who in the medieval period had chosen to live in cells here in England. He didn't actually talk, sadly, about Julian of Norwich, who I consider to be one of the great anchorites of that particular period, and I think reportedly the first woman to write a book in English. Nevertheless, it was a very good uh, programme about how people decide to go and live in isolation. There is though a very big distinction between those who choose to live in isolation between those like myself at the moment who have isolation if you like enforced upon them. Now I'm not alone in being having an enforced isolation. There are people for example in hospital who have dangerous and diseases who have to be kept in isolation. Prisoners have, some prisoners, for very good reason, have to be isolated. There are many, like myself, in quarantine at the moment as people have returned from Europe and belong, beyond and as the government have laid down legislation for us and saying that we must live in quarantine in isolation. But what has most struck me as I've thought about all of this in the last few days are in particular those single people who've had enforced isolation uh, put upon them and not just in my own case, like my own case, for two, a uh, couple of weeks, but for many weeks, if not months. I'm very conscious now of the people who have been living by themselves in a, an enforced isolation through this coronavirus period when they haven't been able to have family and friends over the door. Now, I want to think to suggest to you today that we can have a faith that is also a faith in action. My suggestions to you are not novel or new. The first one is that you could get your address book and you could find somebody or identify someone who is single and you could, now this is a novel thing, you could write them a letter. Now when was the last time you wrote a letter as opposed to an email? They may be very grateful for a letter that pops through the post. If that's too much you could even just send them a postcard. Alternatively, you can pick up the phone and give somebody who's single and isolated by themselves um, um, a ring. You can also be really challenged by thinking about your neighbours around you and just stopping and thinking, are there any who are by themselves, who now for weeks and months have been by themselves isolated and the time has now come, wearing my mask and doing all that is important about social distancing, to make contact with them and say, hello, I'm here, are you okay? During these two weeks of isolation by myself, I've been incredibly grateful to family and friends and others who have rang me to say, hi Roger, I know you're in isolation, you're by yourself, um, hope it's all going well. That's left me feeling with a, a nice glow. I suppose what it is, it makes me feel loved and it makes me feel that I'm cared about. And we all need some of that. This is about faith in action. I want you, in this thought for the day, just to think of two things really. One is the distinction between those moments in our life when we have enforced isolation put upon us and those moments, like mine, when annually or twice a year I might go on retreat and choose to be in isolation. 
And also, as we move into this new term, a period I often say from September to December, when we might think about putting our faith into action. Someone out there may be very grateful, very pleased to hear from you. So, I look forward to seeing many of you, I hope, back in church as soon as we can. And I will try and ring and contact you, as many of you as I can, as soon as I can.